Avatar, The Last Airbender from Netflix is about to be released. If you are wondering what will be Avatar, why this guy has an arrow in his head and above all, should you watch the series? In this video we will talk about 9 things you need to know, like what it is based on, how many chapters it will have, how much effort and money was invested, among other curiosities, without spoiling anything of course, so you can decide whether to watch it or not. This is Appa Comics. Avatar, The Last Airbender is a series that premiered on Nick on February 21, 2005 and lasted until 2008. The animated series, which is not an anime, is set in a world with an oriental style and explains in the intro of each chapter the basic concept of the plot. Many years ago the four nations of this world, the Water Tribes, the Earth Kingdom, the Fire Nation and the Air Nomads lived in harmony. Some people from each nation were born with the ability to control an element, usually in accordance with their place of origin. At one point, the Fire Nation attacked the others, starting a great war. Only one person can master the four elements, the Avatar, and he is in charge of keeping the world in harmony. But after this attack the Avatar disappears for 100 years. Under these relatively simple circumstances develops the story which despite being a series for children touches very mature themes, deep, and in many cases ahead of its time, with a beautiful soundtrack, many references to Asian culture, impeccable character development among many other things. In case you were wondering, this is not a continuation, but an adaptation. That is to say that we will see the story from zero. It is important to clarify that it will not be exactly the same as the animated version, it will follow the strong points of the story with some variation, so it is not necessary to see the animated version before watching the Netflix version, but if you want to do good to your heart and soul, I recommend that at some point in your life you see it because it is considered by many a masterpiece. I myself have seen it at least 20 times. You guys must be getting pretty tired of that movie by now. No one who saw the movie would say that! Let's get him! Avatar is building a huge franchise around it. Since its launch in 2005 the whole universe was expanding with a second spin-off series, comics, written novels. We will even have an animated movie in theaters at the end of 2005 and even we already had a live-action movie, The Last Airbender, which I suggest you don't watch because you will waste an hour and a half of your life with mediocre acting, Absurd changes to very basic things of the series that should not be changed. What the hell was that? To expand it even more and doing it in the best possible way, Paramount, owner of Nickelodeon founded a special studio a few years ago with the original creators called Avatar Studios, so the potential of what is to come is immense. Now that we know a little about the original series, the expansion of the franchise and that it is not a continuation, we can talk a little about the live action. The term live action refers to the fact that it will be made with flesh and blood human beings. The project emerged in September 2018 including the original creators of The Hand of Netflix but only five years later, in mid-2023 we could have some images and previews of what was being achieved to create. The production of the series had many setbacks including the pandemic, strikes of writers and actors, among other things. Despite the challenges, the images and clips we were able to see in the last few months look very good and pleased a large part of the fandom unlike their failed attempt at a movie. Going from an animated series to a human version is difficult, but getting these people can use powers, located in temples or particularly large cities is even more difficult. That's why Netflix spared no expense, making Avatar, The Last Airbender one of the most expensive series in recent times. According to reports, around $12 million were invested per episode, surpassing series like The Last of Us or even the first season of Stranger Things. Netflix bet big on this adaptation since during the pandemic the animated series was the most watched of the year, 15 years after its premiere. 
This budget was used in part for the recreation of the scenarios both physically, i.e. building them, as well as to create the largest immersive virtual scenario used to date, using a technology called the volume consisting of a half-sphere of screens on which scenarios are projected to achieve more natural shots. The cast chosen to play the characters of the series was quite accurate, in general. Physically they look quite similar, not to mention that the costumes are mostly the same as the series, even in the smallest details. Most of the actors are of Asian or Native American origin unlike the unnamed series where the main cast was whitewashed. I mention this because the original animated series was heavily influenced, and they relied on different ethnicities for the creation of the four nations. The bending or manipulation of the elements is something very characteristic of the animated series. To use each element, a series of movements based on real martial arts are used, each one having its own style. For this reason, the cast of the live-action adaptation had to do an intensive bot camp to learn different martial arts to choreograph the bending movements as faithfully as possible. In addition to this, Dallas Liu and Ian Ousley came with a huge amount of previous preparation. The original series had 20 episodes in its first season, The Water Book, 20 minutes each, giving a total of 400 minutes approximately between 6 and 7 hours. The adaptation will have enough time to tell everything that happens in this book because although the episodes will only be 8, each will last an hour. Last but not least, we have the controversies. Adapting this series was a big challenge, since on the one hand, Avatar was already tried to be adapted in live action and was not at all well received by critics as well as fans. Special effects that leave something to be desired, changes in basic mechanics such as fire benders needing an external fire source to use their power, an exaggeratedly accelerated script, among many other factors made these movies the most hated thing in the fandom of Avatar. Netflix's announcement of trying to do it again was taken with zero expectations by the public for this very reason, not to mention that Netflix had a bad reputation with their previous adaptations of anime or video games. On the other hand another point that generates a lot of controversy with this adaptation is the departure of the creators of the series Brian Konietzko and Michael Dante DiMartino. A few months after the announcement by Netflix that they would start with the creation of this adaptation, it was reported that the co-creators had decided to abandon the project due to creative differences. According to rumors it was because they wanted to add more changes than they already had. Honestly we do not know if it will be so or not, but the departure of these two greats was a blow to the expectations of many fans. In my personal opinion it does not seem to me the end of the world, since they were part of the production of the 2010 adaptation, and what is even worse they gave the go-ahead for this thing to come out. For now all the trailers, photos, and interviews hint that although, this version of Netflix will be different from the original story, will remain true to its foundations. The cast, costumes, scenes among other things in general look pretty good. I do not know if a 10, but it looks like it has potential. Meanwhile let's wait just one more week to see the first episode of the series and opine already with the facts. Tonight is the premiere in Hollywood Los Angeles, so stay tuned to the channel for any news we have tonight. For that do not forget to subscribe and give a like if you like the video. We'll be seeing you soon with more content. Bye bye.